There's three categories of these standards called general standards, standards of field work, and standards of reporting. Those are the three categories, general, field work, and reporting. So these are our three categories of generally accepted auditing standards, or GAS. Notice G-A-A-S, GAS with two A's. Now, the first group, the general standards, deal with how qualified you are to take the job, and if you take the job, how good is the work going to be that you're preparing. So the qualification of the auditor and the quality of his or her work. The first one stands for technical training and proficiency. What that means is when you take the job, don't take it until you're properly trained, you have the proper training, proper education, proper background. You're proficient as an auditor. You've done this type of audit before. That's training and proficiency. You should also understand the industry and business, but the question that says it's required before you take the job, no, you can obtain it later. So the wrong answer is that it's required in order to take the job. It is not required, but you should have a good understanding. That's called training and proficiency. That's one of the overall general standards. The second one says independence. What that means is you need to be independent when you take the job. Because remember, you're giving an opinion. Whose statements are these? Management. You're giving an opinion on management's numbers. So when I look at these numbers and the first balance on the balance sheet, the most liquid asset, cash and cash equivalents, I'm going to give an opinion on that number. I need to be independent. If I own stock in the company, that doesn't appear like I'm going to be very objective, very unbiased. Therefore, no one's going to rely on my opinion. If no one relies on my opinion, nobody's going to buy stock. The company goes bankrupt. The U.S. economy falls apart. The gross national product falls apart. All of a sudden, our country gets taken over by another country. We're speaking another language. That's how important auditors are. So you want to make sure that you appear to be independent. With independence, it means to act with integrity and to act with objectivity. Acting with integrity means you actively search for the evidential matter. Acting with objectivity means you're objective, you're unbiased, you don't love the client, you don't hate the client, you're neutral. Now there's two types of independence. Independence in fact and independence in appearance. Independence in fact means what's the real state of mind? Are you really acting with integrity and objectivity? We can't tell unless we slice your head open and do a lobotomy. Independence and appearance, this is what they like to test on the exam and in your classes because what we're concerned with is how does it appear? Does it appear that you are acting with integrity? Does it appear that you are acting with objectivity? So that's what we're talking about with independence and appearance. Now, a couple of ways to impair your independence, which again, they love to test. How do you impair your, impair your independence and appearance? First of all, you should have no direct financial interest. What does that mean? No direct interest in the client, whether it's material or immaterial. In other words, if I own one share of stock in the company, how would this appear to the public? If it said, Raj Phillip, CPA, who's auditing ABC Co., who's also a shareholder, well, I'm not going to be very objective and biased because I own stock in that company. So it doesn't appear. Maybe I really am, in fact, but we don't know that, so we go by independence and appearance. The second thing is no indirect financial interest. Now this is no indirect material financial interest. So what that says is if you have a material indirect interest, you can't do it. You can have an indirect interest, it just can't be material. Let's say for example, I put money in a mutual fund and that fund invests in the company. As long as I don't have direct control of it and it's not material to me or the company, then we're okay. So no direct interest, no material indirect financial interest. Either one of those, if you fall into those categories, then you don't appear to be independent. Therefore, you can't take the job. Now, this is what happened with Enron and Arthur Anderson is all of a sudden people lost confidence in the profession because what happened is Enron was you know, a $50 million company to Arthur Anderson and the partner in charge was the same partner for the last 25 years and making a million and a half bucks a year and people felt like they weren't objective, they weren't unbiased, they weren't neutral. So what happened is they weren't, you know, they would look the other way on certain issues and so forth. So all of a sudden the house of cards of Enron came tumbling down and pulled Arthur Anderson down with them. Because of that, we came up with all these rules, 2001, 2002, all these Sarbanes-Oxley rules that said the partner on the job has to roll off the job every five years, for example. So all of these rules to make it much more clear so that people understand. All the companies that audit public accounting firms now have to report to the 
a PCOB, which is an offshoot of the SEC. So you have to register with them in order to do audits of public firms. These are all rules that came out to make sure that people feel confident. Because again, if nobody thinks you're independent, nobody's going to rely on this opinion. Therefore, the audit is useless. So that's important. The third general standard says you need to act with due professional care. That means that while you're out there doing the audit and the field work, while you're doing the reporting, you need to act with skill. You need to act with due diligence. You need to act without negligence. You need to act with a critical review of the work done at every level. That's what due professional care. While you're out doing the audit, act with skill, due diligence, without negligence, a critical review. Again, if you adhere to these standards, you're generally not considered to have been negligent. That means that you acted properly with due professional care, with skill, with due diligence, without negligence. It doesn't mean you can't make mistakes, but you need to follow the rules. You need to follow these generally accepted auditing standards. The key is study hard, don't get discouraged. Ooh, do a little Michael Jackson walk. Come on down. I've been teaching almost 20 years after I left Deloitte and Touche. I've done this for many, many years, helped thousands and thousands of people accomplish their goal, which is to get through the exam. 